Hello, welcome to this video about how to install WAMP server and configure it and also problem solving because uh, I know quite a lot of people have problems getting some of the services to run so we can run through that a little bit later on and see if we can get everything working properly. So to start off with let's go to WAMP server's website which is simply www.wampserver.com and you'll come onto this page here. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit just to here you've got two downloads one for a 64-bit version and one for a 32-bit version it also says here that it doesn't work on Windows XP so if you're running anything newer than that then that's absolutely fine the other thing you need to know here is are you running a 64-bit system or are you running a 32-bit system so the way to find that out if you hold down the window key on your keyboard and push the I button it'll take you to window settings click on system and then just down here click on about and whereabouts is it it says oh just here system type 64-bit operating system so let's close that if that said 32-bit operating system you need to download this one I've got a 64-bit operating system which most people do have now so I'm going to download the 64-bit version so you've got this um, this pop-up come up with lots of red warnings if we're doing a fresh install, the only thing we really need to be concerned about is do we have C++ for Visual Studio installed? Uh, to find out, click on this link here. Um, select the language and download. I've got a 64-bit system, so I choose this option here. If it was 32-bit, you want the x86.exe one, but we're doing a 64-bit version. Click Next. and down in the bottom corner here it's already downloaded now I've got repair that means it's already installed in your case it may say repair if it does great you can just close this if it doesn't if it just asks you to install it then just go through the very simple next 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 finish you might need to restart at the end of it but once that's done and you've restarted you want to be going back to let's see the WAMP server page click on the link again and then the next thing we want to do is click on download directly that takes us um, to sourceforge.net that's where they host their files and it said that the download is uh, about to start so we're just waiting for that to happen and waiting here we go and the downloads starting now that's going to take a couple of minutes by the looks of it so I'm going to pause the video here and come back in a couple of minutes okay so it's finished downloading so I can click on the file to start the install process I just click yes to that um, I can choose English or French for the language during the installation process English is the only one that's going to work for me. Um, there's a license agreement here which um, you probably should read. Uh, I accept the agreement, click next. And then we've got a lot of information here. Quite a lot of this uh, could well be of uh, some interest to you. Uh, not least, I th it says somewhere here that the, let's have a look, um, install WAMP server in the root of your disk. Uh, that's set up by default so we don't need to change that we'll cover that in a second it also tells us what the username and password is for PHP my admin and things like that there's a lot of important information in there but most of what's in there we will be covering throughout this tutorial so I'm going to click next this is what I was talking about just a moment ago this is the path to the root of my C drive um, which is my Windows installation drive this is the best place to do it um, we'll cover where you can put your files for your web projects later they don't have to be in this folder they can be anywhere on your computer but we'll cover that later on but as far as installing the program is concerned stick to the default and click next um, this is just a name for the for the menu and click install and I'm gonna let that install it's gonna take a couple of minutes as well so I'm gonna pause the video I'll be back in a moment okay so the first prompt we get 
during the installation process is to ask us whether we want to use Internet Explorer as our default browser. I don't. I want to use Chrome. You can use whatever you like, but if you're choosing Chrome, this is how you do it. I'm going to click on Yes, and we want to go back to Program Files x86 to Google, Chrome, Application, and Chrome.exe. For it's asking if we want to use Notepad as our default text editor. Um, I'm not sure which text editor I do want to use at the moment, so I'm just going to say no to this, and we'll just use Notepad for the minute, and then we can carry on with the installation. Okay, so uh, there's some explanations on how WAMP server works here. We're going to be covering this. So here it says root no password for PHP my admin. There's lots of really good information, but we're going to be covering the, all of this in this video anyway. So I'm going to click next and finish, and we are installed. So next, we want to. No, it's not running. You'll see a W uh, going. So if we is put a, a shortcut on the desktop to start the program. Let's double click, click yes couple of boxes come up that's everything starting now down here in the taskbar we've got a sort of amber colored W and it says local server two or three services running so it's not working properly so this is the troubleshooting section of the video so the first thing you want to do if some of these services aren't running is just click on we, we left click um, right click brings up an entirely different menu but we want to left click in this case and then click on restart all services now that'll take a moment red means none of the services are working and we have now got a green W and that means that they're all working everything's okay so that's good but I want to cover some of the other reasons why you might not be able to get some of the services running because a lot of you might actually be watching this video because you are having problems in this respect. So let's have a look. If we right click this time and go to tools, there's a couple of sections here which are really important. Three sections in particular. You've got test port 80. This is for Apache. Okay, and then you've got test port 3306. That's for MySQL. And it's the same for MariaDB. But the most likely one that you're going to be having a problem with, and you can do the same thing for all of the others. But Apache on port 80. So for example if Internet Information Services was running on your computer um, it would conflict with this port 80 and this wouldn't start. So what you can do is click on test port 80 and this window tells us just here that everything is correct, that everything is working correctly. Now if there was a conflict it would tell you what it's conflicting with but what do you do about that? Well, you've got two options. One is you could delete the program that's conflicting with WAMP. Uh, that would be a good solution. It's unlikely that you would want to be running Internet Information Services, for example, as well as WAMP. So you could do that. But the other thing you could do, right click again, go to Tools, and it says use a port other than 80. So if we click on that, it brings up this box here, and we can choose a different port. Now, this is suggesting 8080, which would be a good option. Uh, but there's something very odd about this. If I, You would think that if I click Cancel, that it would stick to the port 80, but it doesn't. If I click OK, it changes it to port 8080. If I click Cancel, it does the same thing. Let's go back into here, and I'll show you what I mean. Use a port other than 8080. So clicking cancel or OK do exactly the same thing. So just watch that. In my case, I I don't want to be using port 8080. Not that there's any big deal really with that. So I'm going to change it back to port 80. So that's one of the ways that you can solve the problem. But you need to go through all of these and see whether there's any conflicts with the port numbers by testing them all and then changing them to a different port number if there is, or removing the programs that are conflicted, which you will get information about in these windows. I can't show you that because I've got nothing conflicting with it. Everything's working perfectly.
but that is the way that you solve 99% of the problems with a WAMP installation. So let's go through the basics of how to use WAMP. Um, if you go to your C drive, which is where we installed WAMP, um, there's a folder called WAMP64. We go in there and then you'll see a www folder. Now that is where you place your um, your sites and they each go in folders. Now I've already created one here. I'm going to delete that and start again. So let's go to a new, create a folder called test site and inside there let's create a new text document but we'll call it index.php html let's open that up in the text editor I've got Microsoft Visual Studio Code as my default editor and let's just write a little bit of HTML just to put a simple message on the screen so hello world closing tag and we're going to save that um, save index.html okay and now if we go to a web browser and type in localhost uh, forward slash test site which is that's the name of the folder that we just created in the www folder hit enter and it opens up the index page that we just created so that's all well and good that will work perfectly for any site doing it that way but it's a little bit inconvenient for a couple of reasons one having to put all of your working files and folders inside this www folder is a little bit inconvenient it will probably be better if we could put it into a documents folder or wherever you like for that matter and the other thing is typing in local host and all this business that's not very uh, user friendly either so there are better ways of doing this so we're going to leave that file as it is and I'll show you how to do something which is pretty clever so let's close that now if we uh, no, we want to left click on the W and you'll see something here it says your virtual host now I haven't got any other than local host which is the one that we just typed in so if we go to cl left click on virtual host management it brings up, up, up this page here and we want to put a little bit of information in here so name of the virtual host so Test site was the name of the folder, but ideally we want to give it some kind of extension. So we could give it .local or uh, or .test, which is what I've done before. It shows us there. So test site .test. When you give it an extension, you want to avoid ones that are used out on the internet, such as .com and .net things like that. And then it wants the complete absolute path of where we put our website so if we open this up again we can we see this uh, this path here if we click somewhere in the blank space it'll give us the absolute path there control C to copy that and paste that in there and that's all we have to do we can just uh, click on start the creation of the virtual host it now says that we need to restart DNS so let's click here and we want to right click this time go to tools right up the top here you've got restart DNS so we left click on there Now this does take a few seconds maybe a minute we'll know it's done when we see um, a black window open up on the screen hopefully that's what's going to happen actually that's taking a little bit of time so I'm wondering if it's happened we've just not seen it so let's type in test oh just just happened then so test site dot test and it opens up our page so the virtual host system that works perfectly 
So the only thing we need to do now is just demonstrate that we can put that um, that test site anywhere else on the computer and make it work uh, wherever we want. Okay, so what we're going to do then is go into a document, go into your documents folder. I've created a new folder called test websites. Um, in here, I'm going to create another folder called we'll call it test site two. And in there, we'll quickly create um, another index page. index.html and so let's just do the same code hello world again and let's just say that okay so now um, this isn't going to work so we have to go into our virtual host go to virtual host management and this one we're going to call test site 2 and we want that path so same thing again we go in there click in the white place control C control V to paste it in there oh no we want to do test site dot test and off we go again we need to restart dns again oops right click on the w go to tools go to the top restart dns we're going to have to wait a moment for that but i can start type typing anyway test that that was much quicker that time test site two dot test and there it is, hello world again, and that's our site in our documents folder. So nowhere near the WW folder in the WAMP uh, installation folder. So just wrapping things up, that's it. We've installed the program. We've configured it. We've gone through some of the reasons why you may have problems running services. So problem solving and showed you how to make the program a lot more convenient so you can run websites from anywhere on your computer um, and that's it in a nutshell that's what most people need this program for uh, so that's as far as i'm going to go but if you do have any questions then feel free to put them in the questions below i'll do my best to answer them or maybe someone else can uh, but until next time thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye for now